And welcome back to Zimbabwe as our dueling cultures continue to struggle for dominance in the ancient world. Now, as you recall, when last we left our heroes after the end of the first year, Jen had decided to worship the lazy god of drummers and mooch off of me to improve the quality of her monument to Zango, the Lord of Drummers. And well done for her. And, you know, seeing that she's done that, and she's kind of tipped her hat, that that's the game she's playing, she wants to keep her costs low and just mooch off of me, that changes the way I think I'm going to play as well. But before we find out what that means, we have to, once again, at the beginning of every year, do the generosity of kings and bid for first player. Now, I'm at 23, she's at 18. Whoever is farthest along, you know, these get put down in reverse order. So I am at 23, so I go first, and then Jen puts hers down. And so there's an implicit benefit to being, to, to having this higher target you have to hit. It's, it's bad you have a higher, hard target to, higher target to hit, but that means you are always the first person to bid on first player. And if you bid only one cow, um, you, you'll get that cow back at the end of your year. So you're just kind of like you just loan that cow. So I'll bid one because why not? I'll get that cow back. And now Jen, with her four bucks, has to decide is she going to raise me. And I don't think she wants to. I don't think she wants first place that bad. So she's just going to let it go, which means we will stay as before. She's second, I'm first, and now it's my turn. And now, like I said, I... I recognize that Jen is going to want to just cruise and you know just keep on buying pottery from me for one cattle a pop. And that doesn't, I don't like that. Um, I don't want to have to, you know, take all the pain of the higher victory point thing while she benefits because this pottery thing, oh, I'm sorry, I should have cleared this out at the end of the last turn. This year, this clay pit and this one and this one, this one, they're all ready to produce again. So this pottery um, village by itself can generate up to four improvements or pottery for four improvements. And so, you know, I, you know by, by getting this majority, I've made it very easy for Jen to piggyback off of it. So I'm not going to let it be so easy for her. And that's going to require a two-step process. So the first thing I'm going to do this year, unlike last year, I'm going to commit myself to a god. Jen committed herself to Zango. I'm going to commit myself to um, an Anzi, or the trickster god, uh, who has a big impact. You know, it's uh, the most, the second, well, yeah, plus five. There's an even more expensive one, um, Obatala. But I'm going to go for an Anzi VR5, which means i got to increase up one, two, three, four, five, even more expensive. I gotta get 28 points to win this game now. But I have gotten myself a special ability for the rest of the game. Pay only one cattle per good bot. And now what's the big deal? Like I said, it only costs one cattle to buy pottery right now. Not for long, things are about to change. It's my turn, first thing I did is I took a card. You always get to take one card, so I've done that. And now, um, if I had any specialists, I could activate them, but I have no specialists, so we skip that. And so I'm gonna do a build action. Remember, the build action is uh, put a new monument somewhere in the world, expand existing monuments, make them taller, or build craftsmen. I'm gonna build another craftsman. Last time I built a potter, this time I'm gonna build a wood carver. I would like wood carving technology, please. My, t my uh, culture is so advanced. We aren't a bunch of lazy drummers like Jen. We learn how to make pottery and wood. So I have now gotten, and I should say, whenever you, it's free, totally free to pick up these technologies. So you, you just pick it up and you immediately get the victory point. So I got one victory point for learning how to be a wood carver. But, not entirely free, my requirements have gone up, again, another three. So, one, two, three. Now I've got to get 31 points to win, as opposed to Jen's 18. But, we are very cultured and refined, which is why we have higher goals for ourselves. Jen, I mean, her, her culture is happy to get at 18 points, because they just sit around drumming all day. Whereas we, we being, um, we, we're very smart people, we know how to make masks and pottery, so we have higher standards. Anyway, sorry, enough of the thematic stuff. It's just really nice that there's like this thematic reasoning behind all these rules. It's, it's really cool, very, very cleverly done. Anyway, so I now have the ability to make pottery and wood carving. However, I should say, when there, is one, there are two requirements whenever you want to grab a technology. One, you, you, you eat the VR, and two, you have to immediately build a village devoted to it. So I now have to, I have to build a wood carving village, which I'm gonna do. And it costs me two cattle, so I take my last two cattle. I'm broke again. And I am, where am I going to put this? I'm going to put this up here somewhere. And because I, I, in the same way this thing has a big majority on all this clay, I want to have a big majority on all the wood of the world too. So let's say if I put it here, it's here. One, two, no, okay, here. One, two, three. One, two, we can get to that wood. One, two, because of the water, so we can get to that wood. And I think one, 
two, three. It can get this guy, can get to all of the forests of the land. It's within three spaces because of these two lakes. It's within three spaces of all of the forests. So that's very nice. Oh, I'm sorry, I gotta put my, oops, not gems, put my marker on it to indicate that I am the Lord of the Forests, um, although it costs me dearly. Okay, now that was my build action. I can't do anything else. I scored one victory point for that. Um, and it, but, it, you know, but really, I guess you can consider it, I scored negative two victory points. Because I got one for the technology, but I, I, my target increased by three. So I lost two points to get this um, fine, fine technology. And now it's Jen's turn. Oh, wait, 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 I'm sorry, but don't forget, the very important thing, when on any turn, when you get a new craftsman village, whenever you build a craftsman village, you have to set the price, and remember, last turn I set the price of my pottery at one, I'm setting the price of my wood masks at three, the most expensive they can be, and as a bonus, whenever you are doing the build a craftsman village, you can readjust the prices of all your existing ones. So I'm going to bump the price of my pottery up from one to three as well. So it has suddenly become very, very expensive in Zimbabwe to get wooden ceremonial masks and beautiful pottery. Now, that's going to hurt Jen. It's going to cost her a lot to mooch off me now. But it doesn't hurt me because the god of tr uh, the trickster god means I only have to pay one cattle for those things. So it's easy peasy for me, very expensive for Jen. And that's just going to turn this all around, and now Jen's going to have to change things. So anyway, that was my whole turn. I decided to worship a god, and I did a build action, which was getting a new thing. Now it's Jen's turn. What's she going to do? She's going to, I was just going to, you know, and now she's going to have to pay, she's going to have to change her plans. What is she going to do? Now, she basically, she just needs a lot more money to be able to buy my goods. And there are ways to get money. I mean, forget, I mean, she's going to get two bucks every turn because she's got a, a what's it that's too tall. And, you know, if she wanted to, she could this turn make this three tall. Now, remember, to get three stories, you need to have two different goods. And there happens to be pottery and wood. So if she could afford it, she could pay me three for my pottery, three for my wood, and get this up to, to three stories tall. And, um, you know, and that would score her a bunch more points. But she does not have enough. She doesn't have six bucks. She only has four bucks. So she can't do it. Does she... Now she could just wait. She could basically skip this whole turn. She'll get two bucks, then she'll have six bucks. She could do it next turn. But I think she needs to be a bit more proactive. And I think what that means is, yeah, she is going to be the first player to grab a specialist. Now that means, I mean, well, oh, first of all, I should say, both Jen and I have gotten our gods now. So these other gods, nobody cares about them. They will not be worshiped in this game. And instead, they'll be accidentally thrown to the floor. Sorry about that, Obataba. All right, or... Obat Obatala, these gods out of the game. But there are still these specialists that we can hire who give us other special abilities. And Jen is gonna hire the first specialist of the game. She's gonna hire the herd, which is expensive, VR6. She didn't wanna have to do it, but one, two, three, four, five, six. Still, she only has to score 24 against my 31. So she's still doing better. And now what the herd does is, may pay two cattle to gain one cattle from the common stock. Use it most three times per turn. So what that means is, she can breed, and she will do that. She will put two cattle down to get another one. She can do it again. She'll put two more cattle down to get another one. So she just made two bucks for free. Very, very nice. And now, she, so that was her card business this turn, but she still has a build. Remember, her builds are, she can improve a monument, but she has no money to buy my goods. She can place a craftsman, but she has no money to build a craftsman village. Or she can erect a new monument. Erecting a new monument, you can only do one per turn, is always free. So she's going to erect a second monument. I think... <sighs> what will she do? She will put it... Uh, well, I, let's see, Mike, she can put it over here. Oh, sorry, I got a little spit on the uh, Zimbabwe Plains. Oh dear. She can put it over here so it could potentially benefit from these rivers. Or, now what, the only limit is she cannot put it immediately adjacent to anything already here. So she can't put it here, she can't put it here. Uh, but she could put it here, say. And then, you know, it's right next to that diamond mine, and that might be nice. And it's right next to these rivers, so, you know, it might be easier in the same way this thing, you know, stuff could flow up this river, might, that might help her there too. So you want to put it there? Yeah, what the heck, she'll put it there. And now, it was free, but it was one point, so she just scored one point. Okay, and that was her whole turn. 
And now at the end of the turn, we do our income, which means we get all our um, cattle back. So here's the, so she paid four cattle to get to, to net two, so she's at six cattle. Meanwhile, I get my one cattle back. Remember I paid for my, my um, holding on a first player. And now we get our income. Jen gets two, because she's got a tower that's too tall. So she is loaded. She's sitting on eight bucks, and I'm sitting on two bucks. So we are dirt poor. Um, so her culture of bongo drums and breeding cows is really breaking in the dough. It's not looking good for me. But, you know, it's still early in the game, and I'm playing a long game. I've set myself up so that I can actually start speeding up. Maybe better than her, maybe not. We'll see what happens. So, but again, it's the beginning of the next year. So the first thing, again, generosity of kings. We have to bid. And now I am so dirt poor, I think I might actually skip on the bidding and let Jen go first so I can hold on to some money. Now, what do I need money for? Yes, I, actually, I am. With only $2 to my name, I am, I'm going to pass, which means instantly I am the second player. Jen doesn't even have to worry about it. She is first player, so she gets to go first. And now what is she going to do? Well, I think, well, I think I know what she's going to do. She would like to continue to mooch off of, well, she'd like to continue to mooch off of me. She'd like to make this a level two tower like this one. But remember, it costs her three cows. Is she going to do it? Yeah, she made a bunch of cows. She's going to do it. So she um, declares, she's, um, now she could, if she wants to, she could grab another specialist. She's not going to, she's going to save her money for other stuff. So um, her build action is going to be making this a level two tower, which means she needs one resource. And so she will pay one, two, three, Ouch, so painful. One, two, three. Three bucks to my wood carver. To, and so this wood carver will get some wood from a, one of the forests. He can get from any of these forests. He can come all the way. With that. He'll go to this forest, and the, the one, two, three, that wood will be transported up to the wood carver, converted into masks, and then it's only one, two spaces to get to Jen's monument. So basically, Jen paid me three bucks to convert this lumber into masks and deliver it, and so she could get a level two monument. So very, very nice. A level two monument, as you recall, uh, scores her two more points. One, two. And that was her build action. That was her whole build action. But remember, she's still got a herd, so uh, she has a worker, so she's going to put him to work. One, two, three, four, she's uh, made two more cows. So that was her whole turn. And now it's my turn. With my two measly bucks, hmm, with two bucks, I could, now that's interesting, do I want to go on ahead and build up my, well, I, I could spend one buck, it only cost me one buck to go to either my own potter or my own wood maker to get this up to level two. But the thing is, um, if you have multiple monuments on the go, you can upgrade them all. You can upgrade all of them on a turn. So it's a little bit more efficient. Say if I have two or three monuments and then in one turn, boom, I just, you know, get them all up to the top level. So I think I'm going to wait. I'm not going to, I'm going to, um, on this turn, I'm just going to put a single monument down for free like Jen did last turn. Super cheap. And where am I going to put it? I think I'll put it, I shall name you... I'll put it over here. So it's also still kind of in the area of this diamond thing. You're kind of more for the long-term game. Eventually that diamonds will come into play, but probably not until close to the end of the game. So now this was free. Putting a level one monument is free. And that scored me one point. And um, let's see, do I have any helpers? No, but I, so that means I've got these two bucks. I can't do any builds because my build was building this thing for free. But do I want to spend two bucks and get a, get a, a specialist? The shaman... Let's me um, put resources on the map. The builder makes it easier for me, makes it cheaper for me to build buildings. But I've already got two buildings. I don't think I'm worried about that. Do I care about that? I, maybe I do. I should get a worker. Yeah, I should. Uh, and the actually interesting thing is the builder and the nomad are the only two specialists, it says this in the rules, who you, you have to pay their cost, but you don't have to do their action. So I could just buy, I, so I would have to, well, that'd be kind of wasteful. I could pay $2 to get this builder, but I, you know, $2 to activate, but then I wouldn't even get its ability. So I'm just going to pass. I'm not going to do anything. So my whole turn was basically just collecting some money from Jen and getting my own, oops, I'm sorry. I haven't actually expanded this, getting my own second monument on the board. And so that was the end of my second year. Year's over. Um, so now it's income time. I get one income plus the money Jen paid me for my uh, mask. 
Jen gets all these Moo Moo Cows. Very, very nice. And Jen gets two for having a level two tower, and I get one for still having dinky little level one towers. But that'll change next turn. Okay. So at the end of the second year, she's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bucks to my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bucks. Is that right? Yeah, seven. So, you know, I'm, I'm catching up with the money, um, but I'm still way behind in the points. I'm like 10 points behind her almost, it looks like. So we're gonna have to do something about that. But anyway, okay, on to the third year. As always, we first must have the generosity of the kings. And since I'm still ahead, I bid first. Do I wanna hold on to first this turn? Well, what am I gonna do this turn? Well, I know the main thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some resources to build these up so I can start catching up on points. And because both of these guys generate so much, it's not like I have to be in a rush to do it. So I'm almost inclined to say, I'm just going to, hmm. Well, I'm, I'm not in a rush to do anything on the board because I've guaranteed I can pick up those. So I don't have to rush for that. But I would like to get this builder before Jen does. Cause I mean, I would still like to build some more buildings and having the builder makes it cheaper to build buildings. And I would like to, but, but I'm not even gonna build a building this turn. I'm gonna improve the quality of my existing towers. So yeah, I'm just gonna pass again. And at which point suddenly Jen is, is first player again. So that's fine. Jen is first and what's she gonna do? Now. She has enough money, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight, nine. So she could spend six bucks to um, you know, pay my potter and my mask maker to improve one of her two monuments. But that's really expensive. Arg! and somebody's at the door. So I will pause and be back. Talk to you soon, everybody. Sorry about that. Okay, continuing where we just left off, Jen could pay a ton of money, but, yeah, I mean, actually what she could do, she could just pass on this turn, um, breed three more cows, which would give her 12, which means she'd have enough on the next turn to even with my incredibly high prices, increase both her monuments, which would score her eight points, which would get her very, very close to winning. But then she would kind of hit a wall because to get up to the next level, she would have to have another resource besides just my two. So I think it's about time that she, she's decided it's about time for her to start generating her own resources rather than just relying on my ridiculously overpriced ones. So she's first, she is going to get herself a technology. Now she could go on ahead and get the potter or the woodcarver, but since I got to those first, the one she takes would actually be a little bit more expensive. Um, you know, the potter I got was three, but the one she'd take would be four. She's not going to take that. I think instead she is going to try to corner the market on ivory uh, because nobody's actually gotten into that market yet. Now, so like before when I did this, she gets one victory point immediately for learning the fine art of ivory crafting. So that's one point. And to actually be able to take this, she has to build an ivory carver somewhere. And they'll uh, go ahead and grab an ivory carver. And you know, unlike the ones I've been building, these ones are gigantic. They're two by two. So she's got to put this someplace. And there is only one elephant on the entire board. So it needs to be um, within three spaces of that, of these elephant hunting grounds. And so, and now what she wants to do, she wants to put this in such a way that it's close to the elephant, but it's also close to both of her existing monuments while keeping them farther away from my monuments. So her monuments will benefit and mine won't. So, you know, she, if she put it right here, let's say, it'd be one, two, three, it gets what's hers, but it can get to both of mine too, because mine's right next to it, and then one, two, three. Oh, but this monument would not benefit. So putting it here means both of hers would, but only one of mine would, so that's not bad. Putting it here, I think it's gonna be the same thing, basically. But now what about putting it over here? Now, doing, going here means that, um, you know, obviously this place does, because it's right up next to the water, but the other ones, her other one is very, very far away. However, she could still transfer this ivory all the way over to this one by using what's called um, hubs. And maybe that'd be worth doing, if for no other reason, just to show it in action. Plus it means, yeah, because it's one, two. Actually, yeah, that's interesting. So putting it here means it's a, it's in a spitting distance from this place. You can get to here by using only one hub, but to get to mine, to get to hers, it would have to use a hub. To get, to get to mine, it would have to use one hub. To get to my other one, it would have to use two hubs. It's so ridiculously far. So it's one, two, three, yeah. So okay, so she's gonna build it over here. Now, you remember, uh, it costs two cattle. Oh wait, oh, and I forgot, her VR had to increase by two. So she's gone from 24 to 26. So now she's gotta get 26 points to win. Um, and it costs her two cattle of her prodigious number of cattle to build this thing and put a marker so this is hers. 
And now that was her build action. She cannot work on her monuments at all because she built a thing instead. Uh, but she's, oh, actually, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Actually, hmm. No, 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 she's happy with that. She's fine. So now or for the rest of the time, I think she'll send one, two, three, four, five, six cattle over to breed and she will make three more bucks. So she is definitely getting her points worth out of this herd. She's making her a ton of money. Okay, so that was her whole turn. Now it's my turn. And it is time to build these guys up a little bit. Or actually, do I want to wait another turn and just build another monument for free? And then in one turn, I, you know, I could be super efficient and in one turn expand three of them. I mean, that would, I mean, because, you know, eventually if I, I do these right now, sooner or later, I'd have to do that. I put another one out. I'll have to do it by itself. So do I want to be, do I want to put that off a little bit? Yeah, I'm, I think I am. I'm, crazy it is. I'm going to go one more turn. I'm just going to build another little level one. Ah, uh, let's see. Now we're, oh, actually knowing this. Should probably put it in a way that benefit. Is there a way I can? This could benefit me. Okay, I want to make sure it's equidistant from these things and from these, so that this thing will be able to benefit as well. Now I can't put it here, here, or here, or here because it can't go adjacent to anything. I put this one here, which is way too far away from this. So I, I want this one to be close to at least two things as well. So if I put it here, let's say that means it's close, it's close. But to get the uh, masks, well, I'd have to use one hub to make it there. Because it, it could travel here and then hub off of it to travel down there. So that's not too bad. But either way, and just to get it up to level two, there's two things that are within spin distance. So I'll put it right there. Okay. So that was my build action. And then I also have card stuff I could do. Although it's still, unlike Jen, I still don't have a herder. I have, I've not done any specialists. Should I hire a specialist? Oh, you know what? Actually, I think I will. Hold on a second. Before I actually put this out. I haven't put this out yet. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hire a specialist of my own. I'm gonna hire the Rainmaker. We are gonna make it rain. All right, now it costs one. So it wasn't too painful just to go up by one more point. So I gotta get 32 points down instead of 31. But I have to activate him immediately now. I can place one water tile for three cattle. So I have to pay three cattle or else I couldn't have hired him. So I pay the three cattle. I put a water tile out. And you know how, I was, how, um, how sad it was for me that Jen putting this ivory meant it was really far away from my guys? Not now. Now, this ivory can go right to here, and but it's still one, two, three, four. Oh, it's still too far away from that one. Why did I build this one so far away? Oh, but let's see. So it's, so it can go one, one, two, three, one, two. Okay, but before, to get ivory to here requires one hub. To get ivory to here requires two hubs. Now I can get the ivory here for free or for, for no hubs and it only costs one hub to get it over there. Okay, so that's what I did. Um, I, you know, I've used my rain turmoil and I'm sorry. Actually, that was dumb. I uh, tried to pay my three to the bank. I don't pay my three to the bank. I pay the rain, god, the rain guy. So I paid him three cattle. <coughs> he did a rain dance, made some new water up here and now it's gonna be easier for me to get this ivory to my places. And after having done that, now is when I will take this guy and put him down here because, or actually, let's see. Uh, I still, okay. I want to do this in such a way that he, okay, he's close to this ivory. He can get to that ivory because it's one. And this is one, two, three. Oh, it's still, still too far away to be able to get from that wood. I guess I want to be within three. I can't put it here because you can't have them next to each other. I can't put it here. I can't put it here. Can't put it there. So this is the closest I can get it. Or, well, hold on a second. So one, two, three. No, yeah, this is about the best I can do, I think. Putting it right there, which means it still has to take one hub to get there. But um, it's, you know, because of this water. Okay, so there we go. So that was my turn. I got one point for that. Let's see. Now, okay, I, actually, I've lost track. I have one, two, three points for these, and then I have one, two. So I should have a total, yeah, I should have five points total right now um, for my three monuments. Jen, meanwhile, should, she has two level twos, so that should be four five she should have oh wait no she should have um no no six seven she should have seven she should have. okay so we're all set up that was the end of the year i now have my own worker who i've done it jen's you know breeding more like crazy with her herd and that's the end of the turn so at the end of the turn we get all our stuff back so um i get my my cows back from the rainmaker jen gets her ridiculously huge monster herd and once again, we get income. I get one because I still don't have any level twos and Jen gets two because she has some level twos. So she is rich, I tell you. But, okay, now, this turn. I th now, 
first player has gotten more interesting, and I'll tell you why. This ivory can only generate off of this one place. As soon as somebody comes here to get ivory to expand any monument, the elephants are gone. And so only one of us can benefit from this. So suddenly, we both want to go first. And so I have to bid first, to go first, and so I'm going to bid at least two. One, two, and I think, I think I'm actually going to bid three. I'm going to make Jen pay for it. All right, I'm bidding three. So one, two, three, and two of that I'll get back, but one of it will go to her. And now Jen, she's got to raise to four at least if she wants to go first. And if she doesn't go first, she knows I will get her ivory before she gets a chance to, and um, you know she'll be asshole. Oh, by the way, I forgot, when she, when she put her ivory out, she set the price at one. She could set it higher, but there's no reason to because I've got the trickster god. Even if she set it to three, I'd still only pay one. So she'd be hurting herself. So she set it to one. Forgot about that. Okay. So Jen, she does not want me to be able to go first and take that ivory that she just paid through the nose for. So I raised, I started with three. She's going to definitely see me. I think she's going to go to five because she goes to four. Well, let's see. If, I, if she goes to four, I have to go to five. But I only have five left. So that would be everything. So I would have to pay, and then I wouldn't even be able to do anything with it. So she's just gonna go to four. So I paid one, two, three, she pays one, two, three, four. Okay, and so and then I'm gonna pass, because if I now I have to raise it to five, that would be all my money remaining, and I wouldn't have any money to actually do anything this turn. So Jen wins, she's first, and at the end of the year, I'm gonna get four of this cattle back and she's gonna get three. So she has paid more than I have for this. But first thing she is gonna do is grab that ivory since it's, it's a hot ticket, it's a hot commodity. So that means she is deciding to expand one of her towers. Although that, yeah, well, okay. okay. So let's say um, she's gonna, she, this is the tower she's gonna to expand, right? Or should she expand this one? Doesn't really matter. Let's say she expands this one because the ivory uh, is one, two, three. No, no. If she wants to expand this one, it would. Uh, oh. Yeah. Can she expand two? Now, here's the thing. These are both level, these are two story monuments. If she wants to make it a three story monument, she has to give up two resources. These ones are expensive for her, this one's cheap. So if she wants to expand both of them, she'd have to pay one. Two, three, four to expand one of them. And for the other one, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six. So she'd have to pay 10 bucks in total if she wanted to expand both of her monuments. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. She can't afford it. So she's only going to build up one of her monuments. It's a little too broke. So that she's gonna expand this one. It will cost so she needs two resources. The first resource will come from this ivory. And so she pays one buck to the ivory carver, and she'll get that buck back because it's hers. And she covers up the, the elephant. So now no one, there is no more ivory they'll be coming. So I can't benefit from that. That's why Jen paid through the nose to go first. Okay, so um, she's got the ivory, but that's just one. She needs one more resource. So now she will pay one, two, three to, um, uh, I guess to my potter. And so, um, you know, this potter will use some clay. So she paid three to have this potter make some pottery. The clay came from here, one, two, three, to make it here. And then it went one, two, three via the river, via my own river. Although it could have gone this way too. It could have gone one, two, three. So either way, the pottery got up here. And so the pot between the pottery and the ivory, I was able to get to a level three monument. And going from a level two to level three scores four additional points. So Jen's just scored one, two, three, Four points, not too bad. Um, although it costs her a bit, but you know she's uh, got to spend money to make money, don't you? Okay. Now, is there anything else she wants to do? Well, of course she wants to herd. She's got four guys left over, so she'll just go on ahead and herd to get two more bucks, so she can keep on making that money. And now she's got no more money, so she would not be able to hire another specialist even if she wanted to. She's done. Now it's my turn. I've got five bucks left over. I cannot grab any of that ivory. But I think this is the turn when I'm finally, in one fell swoop, going to make all these guys level twos. So that means each one, a, a, a second story means only one resource. So I need a resource for here, here, and here. And um, so let's start to pay them. I will pay one resource to my wood carver. And this wood carver up here will go to this forest. So this forest feeds the wood carver. And then the wood carver, one, two, feeds this guy. And so I just scored two points. One, two. Now, next up, 
I will pay, because you can do this as many times as you can afford, I will pay $1 to go to my um, wood carver again. And so now my wood carver will go chop down this forest. And you know the forest comes in and the mass, ceremonial masks go one, two to get to here. And so that was two more points, one, two. And then finally, now this guy, I could have the woodcarver go again, but the, the woodcarver is a bit too far away because it'd be one, two, three, four. It's too far to go. Although I could use this as a hub to transport farther, but that would just cost me additional money. So instead, I'm gonna pay $1 to my potter and my potter will go on ahead and say I use all this clay pit up. So the clay comes over here to be turned into pottery. The pottery gets delivered here. And I made another three, so that's two more points. One, two, and I have caught up. We are tied on points. Although, Jen only has to get 26. I got to get 32. So we're not really tied. Jen is still quite a bit ahead of me. But in one turn, I have, you know, I've done a significant amount of catching back up. But now, if I want to get these up any higher, I am going to have to get some of Jen's ivory because to get to a level, a third story, well, no, no, that's not true. To get to a third story building, I only need two resources and I still got these on the cheap, but if I want to get to a four story, I'll have to use Jen's ivory or make some more stuff. So that was the end of my turn. I've still got two guys. I could hire another guy, but I don't think I really want to hire any of those guys. I could, well, I, and I can't afford to make it rain. So I'm just going to be done with that. That was the end of my turn. All right, and now it's income time. Jen's got one that's three stories high, so she gets a golden calf. That's, you know, gold is worth three, so she got, and then she gets all these herds back, and she gets the one I paid for, or she paid to herself for her ivory. Um, oh, and she gets these three that were for the big bid. I get four from this big bid. I get all this stuff from the potter. I get here, and let's see, so at the end of, I've got one, two, three, one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and Jen, has got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So Jen's still $1 ahead of me because of her herd, even though she had to pay more for that. And now at the end of that turn, um, well, again, we have to bid. And you can see we're starting to get to the point where we're having a lot of money. Bids are start gonna go up quite a bit more as we fight for first player. Because okay, obviously all these um, generating resources come back out again, but they're still, whoever goes first gets the ivory. So, you know, we're going to pay an arm and a leg because that's the, that's the only third resource. I think we need to get another resource out. I think somebody is going to want to, you know, I'm going to play with one more turn because I'm going to, oh, let's see. Now, we are both rich enough. We could afford to get diamonds into the game. It costs 10 cattle to build a diamond cutter. But then there are four resources, which we're going to start needing as we get our monuments higher and higher. Alternatively... I think this might be the turn that one of us starts actually making some prestige resources. Instead of the regular wooden masks, you get sculpted fancy wooden masks. Or instead of the regular pottery, you get these really cool vessels. And that changes everything. In fact, I think this is going to be a turn that Jen does that. Which means Jen doesn't care that much. Oh, well, okay. I think actually this is a turn I'm going to stop. But before I do, I'm going to explain vessels. I'm not going to do a full turn. But I'm just going to say what Jen wants to do this turn. After we do the bidding, we find out whose turn. When it eventually comes around to her turn, I think she is going to declare that she is going to get the technology for vessel making. That increases her VR by one, two, three. So she's starting to catch up with me. Unfortunately, she wants to stay behind. She still is behind. Um, and it costs her four cattle to build one of these things. And this is a big thing. So she can build this somewhere in the world. And now here's the interesting thing. This becomes the second half of the game. Really interesting upsets start happening. Remember how I have this pottery, right? And this guy is pretty much monopolizing all the clay pits of the world except for this one. As soon as a vessel maker gets built, you know, this is basically upgraded pottery. As soon as one of these gets appears in the world, Pottery is useless and nobody wants it to upgrade their um, monuments anymore. So right now I have, I enjoy this monopoly and it costs Jen three to make pottery. It only costs me one. If Jen builds this and um, suddenly we can't use my super expensive pottery, we have to start using her super ceramics instead. And then she controls the clay instead of me controlling the clay. And that is where you know a huge upset, suddenly you can all turn around. But for Jen to do that, she would have to add three more to her mark. And does she want to do that or does she want to stay lower and continue trying to just make enough money to pay my exorbitant fees rather than making her own industry out of upgraded pottery or upgraded wood or upgraded ivory? 
And that's where the things become interesting. Alternatively, you know how we're in this, and me meanwhile, I'm not really happy about the fact that I have to do this mad rush to get this ivory, because there's only one. I might hire the shaman who, for two cattle, would let me put another ivory field, maybe somewhere out here, and then I could make my own ivory generator that would feed my buildings, and I wouldn't have to be so reliant on gems. And so on and so on and so on, until somebody scores the points they need to score. Now that is what Zimbabwe is all about. That's where things start getting really, really interesting as you have this brinksmanship of these upgrades and you think you got in the lead, but then somebody takes a, a worker that changes the entire landscape just like that in one turn. So hopefully you guys have a rough idea of how Zimbabwe plays. And if you'd like to hear some final thoughts about it, you can push the button in five, four, three, two, one. Thanks a lot, everybody.